YouTube, Brad Phillips, look at this. We got the PA18 Super Cub from FMS. This is in the 1.7 meter size. Beautiful LEDs and big barn door flaps. We are flying this with the Reflex and a 610, our 620 is on order. The only modification to radio setup, if you're following this directly after having watched the Unbox Build radio setup, is we went from zero, six, and 10 on elevator compensation for flaps to zero, eight, and 16 for elevator compensation. Mm -hmm. So, with all the same settings, so otherwise just follow along in the video. We'll do a little back taxi for you. This thing flies great on 4S, 2200, 50C pack, because they do call out a 35C. You could probably get away with a 30C just fine, but we're using a Gen 1 here, and we're gonna go ahead and do grass ops and stull, full landing flaps. Here we go, full throttle, and there it is, up in the air, out of the flaps, and look at that beauty. Tons of rudder authority, no problem getting in the air. We've got a little bit of wind that was helping us along, out of the throttle a little bit, about 10%. Look at the speed, guys. This thing is a joy to fly. It is very much a great flying cub. You do not have to ramrod it around like I am now, but it's super fun to do. And as you can see, look at that wind sock, just doesn't even care. The plane's like, oh, it's windy? What? When did that happen? Look at this, folks. Look how beautiful that is. Right next to us, no problems at all. Into the throttle. And here we go. Full landing flaps coming in. Look at this thing slow down, watch this. <laughs> Barely moving, <laughs> that is so cool. Lots of rudder, pretty much slope in there. And then out of those flaps and we'll ride the wind down the runway. Whoa, <laughs> almost bit it there. Got a nasty gust at the end. Upside down flight's a little bit wonky on this because of the small amount of dihedral. It definitely has power to do what you wanna do, either upside down or right side up. Let's see if we can do a nice steep landing approach right at our feet. About 15% throttle there just to keep that prop tractoring. And look at that thing, coming in for a carrier landing, leading off lots of inertia by waving my wings. And there we are, right at our feet. Sorry, touch and went. Noticing a little bit more vibration today on the nylon prop. We didn't notice any of that last night on our maiden, our true maiden. You guys might be seeing this at the first flight just because the visibility is maybe just a little bit better on camera. But I can definitely tell you this, guys, our flight last night was amazing. We ended up going out for dinner with the family, came home and I said, oh my goodness, look at this crispy, beautiful night. It was cool, we had had rain and crazy amounts of wind all day yesterday. And we said, there's no way we can fly. Let's go ahead and take up the family on the offer to go out to eat. Using rudder to, to make most of that turn, I basically set my elevator and then I just counteract the wind and environmental impact with the rudder. And that changes where the nose is going. And then into the throttle. Obviously when it's windy, you do have to ride the throttle a little bit harder to maintain full control. You keep all that air across the surfaces. And I should be massaging these power lines more because I won't be able to massage them much longer because they are coming down, that's right. We wrote a big, gigantic, fat check to the power company so they can come and take their crap out of my yard. That's right, the crap I bought and paid for three years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's for the manned aircraft business. Not necessarily for the radio controlled stuff, but who are we kidding? It's gonna be awesome for the radio controlled stuff too. And guys, this plane is one of those that's just gonna tempt you. It's a temptress. It's gonna be like, please, full throttle. Full throttle, Brian, give it to me hard. And you'll be like, no, I wanna fly slow like this. Look, flying slow. 
and you can do that all day long. You have to ride the elevator a little bit. And by the way, battery is strapped in, centered on the front and back straps. CG is dead on. You will not have to search hard to hit the perfect spot. Just gotta get over the power lines. There we go. 1700 millimeters is a great size, by the way, if you've never flown 1700 millimeters. We have all the millimeter sizes and we love them all, but I can definitely tell you this right now, if you're flying a 1200 millimeter or 1300 millimeter and you wanna step up your game a little bit, this thing will definitely give it to you the way you want it. I mean, look how agile it is, folks. It's not like it's calm right now. Mm -mm. Oh, and by the way, the reflex is keeping up great. Why don't we give you guys a little bit of the auto leveling. We'll come out here about 50% throttle and we'll run it down the length. Okay, I'm gonna go into auto leveling. As you can see, it leveled the plane. And we'll just so you guys can see what's going on when you let go of the sticks, it's gonna automatically level. No, I'm not looking. That's probably not a good idea. Jank it down, it recovers. Can you put it into a flip? Nope, limited bank angles as expected. Oh, look at that, I tricked it. <laughs> but as you can see, I let go and it comes right out of it. And let's see what a landing looks like, full landing flaps, forcing the nose down. We have plenty of down to get it down here. We're out of the throttle altogether. And maybe we'll just do grass ops on this one. It, we are in auto leveling. Look how gorgeous this is gonna be. Dang it, auto leveling, you made me look bad. Okay out of the auto leveling. <laughs> We're gonna see if we can one up the auto leveling. Beautiful takeoff out of the flaps and we'll go around a little doohickey. The doohickey meaning our junk pile. <laughs> I was gonna say. Oh, corn hold. And we're not gonna land with the wind. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten basic aerodynamics. I have my one minute warning here. We'll go down and under the power lines and just do a more cooler landing than the auto leveling can do. I'll show you who's boss auto leveling. Even though your landing will probably be better than mine, you big jerk. Full landing flaps coming in. Into ground effect. There it is. Yep, auto leveling did a better job. Ticks me off. All right, here we go. So we're gonna come out of this. We're gonna try a stole takeoff right here with now takeoff flaps. From, well, okay, so let's see. From here to the end of the driveway is probably about 10 feet. Mm -hmm. So they claim uh, three meters, so that'd be about 10 feet, roughly. Yep. Excuse me, more like 12, but still. I'm gonna go full up elevator, take off flaps, full throttle, and there it is. Out of the flaps, 50% throttle, 30% take off flaps. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, and by the way, we adjusted our timer. That's one other thing we did change. We went to seven and a half minute timer because we just listened to our voltage alarm. Probably a little bit harder on it today. I think we'd about eight and a half or 8.45 on our maiden in the dark. Look at that thing getting pushed. Mm -hmm. You hear the, did you hear the beep? Yep. So what we like to do here on Brian Phillips RC is just destroy the batteries for your pleasure. So take off flaps coming in here. Slip, 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 and there it is. Beautiful, right at our feet, guys. That's good. So, in conclusion, hard tires can be beautiful, which these are most definitely, but they don't work as good on pavement, so you just need to be aware the biggest flaw on this plane is the most big and beautiful landing gear that you see there. If they were pneumatic, I think this plane would be a really much, pretty much a 10 out of 10. I love this plane, it flies really good, it looks gorgeous. It definitely went together super easy. Super easy to take the full wing off. If you wanna transport this, you can in fact undo what is basically, what, three screws? Mm -hmm. Two millimeters? Yep. The wing pulls straight out. Those little brackets pop out. This thing will fit yep. in smaller than a 1200 millimeter plane for sure. Um, also the tail's a little bit more short than on some of the competitive offerings in the 1.5 meter class. So that's a really cool thing. Also, the landing gear are very robust. They do spring, I love that. 
but pneumatic tires would really be the solution to really round this thing off perfectly. Great playing the PA18 by FMS. Definitely pick yours up today. Follow the link in the video description below. Our unbox build radio setup, we go into a little bit more detail. If you're a beginner pilot and you're looking at any plug and fly, keep in mind plug and flies take a little bit more skill to get going in the air but it's not like it's a hard thing. You can just literally follow along our video and we'll get you from in the box to in the air. But then flying is a whole nother thing and it does take time, practice, and you have to work at it. And the more you do it in a short period of time, the better pilot you're gonna be quicker. Don't be afraid to buy this because when you crash it, it will break just like every other plane, but it's gonna be definitely fixable and I think it's gonna be reasonable to fix. So if you get this as your first or second plane, you'd be making a good decision. However, I wanna, I wanna remind you about something. If you get a 3S and you put it in here and you wanna fly this plane, it's gonna be more doggy. And that means, and you're probably thinking to yourself, yeah, but I don't want it to be too powerful because I'm a beginner. Wrong. Mm -hmm. You do want the power. You just need to learn to control your tendency to give too much power all the time. That's what's gonna chew through your batteries. Okay, but power saves lives in airplanes. More power is by far better in my opinion, but you may wanna set your rates a little bit lower, okay? So when you set up your dual rates in Expo, you could just fly in this mode instead of this mode. I start in the center, I love it. So anyway, great plane, um, a lot cheaper without having to buy a full safe equipped or AS3X equipped receiver. So that's nice that we were able to use actually a six channel that we had waiting uh, for a plane that never happened but we do have a 620 coming uh, for this plane. So we're gonna recommend the 620. It's just like the 610, it just happens to be. You don't need any of the bells and whistles from the 620 on this. The 620 has a couple more telemetry items that are not required on this particular plane. So super easy install. This thing goes together in, what would you say, about a half an hour if you're just doing it on your own, not filming it? Yeah, probably. I mean, 10 minutes to set up the radio, 25, 30 minutes to build the plane. It's not hard. Yeah. And if you guys need any help, definitely check out the Unbox Build Radio setup. We've given you two maiden flights, technically one maiden flight and then a second flight in this video series. And we think you're gonna love it. We definitely will revisit it. And yes, ours did come with floats, but as you can see, we don't really have a great place to fly from floats yet. But someday <laughs> soon, we hope to accomplish that goal because that would be totally sweet. And then we'll be able to bring you guys ground footage and water footage in the same setting. Be super cool. All right, guys, if you haven't already, check out the links in the video description below. We love this plane. We know you'll love it too. Check out our little tips and tricks in the Unbox Build Radio setup. And if you wanna support us beyond buying the planes from the links, which is really the best way you can support us financially, then we also have Patreon and PayPal. If you just have to buy this from your local hobby shop, but you'd really rather support us you know, some people have gotten super excited about that and they'll throw us a couple of bucks on Patreon or PayPal, but we're not asking for that. We just want you to buy these things from the links and that's the easiest way to support us. And obviously come back and watch the videos, smash the like button. It really does help to make up for our long format videos where we show you all the dirty little secrets that the manufacturers don't want you to see like these not very squishy tires. Show them how not squishy yeah. they are. Mm -hmm. So of all the things that are awesome on this plane, that is really honestly the only thing I don't like about it. And this plane is really good. Yeah. So if you're flying from grass ops, you'll never know any better. If you're flying from pavement, you're gonna know immediately. But that being said, I still love this plane. Mm -hmm. And honestly, we see a lot of planes that have hard tires. I just kind of wish we could make an industry standard of big squishy tires like we're doing on our crawlers, guys. If you're listening at FMS, we really like this plane. We give us some squishy tires. All right, cool guys, signing out. So much more coming from Brian Phillips RC, including a night flight if you haven't already seen it before this one. But we appreciate you as always, world's best audience on YouTube. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this, we got the FMS PA18 Super Cub with beautiful, gorgeous nav lights and forward facing landing light. This thing is super exciting. 1700 millimeters, running on 4S 2200. As you can see, we've got some barn doors set up for flaps, two second deployment. This is equipped with the reflex and we are flying on an AR610 because our 620 is being chipped. So we're gonna do this for our maiden right now. In stabilization mode, but not auto leveling yet. Oh yes, awesome. Guys, this thing is powerful.
All right, let me go up there a little bit. So takeoff flaps are on now. Wow, those lights are super bright and that thing is rock solid, folks. It's not dead calm. It looks like it might be, but it's not. That thing looks so good. Let's go into the bowl here, camera crew. Full landing flaps here. A little bit of throttle. Look how slow you can fly it. I love it. It's been a rainy, rainy, crappy day. Did not think we'd be flying this thing tonight. You guys see that wind I just kicked? Oh, that is so gorgeous. Using a little bit of rudder to kick that nose over. Okay, out of the takeoff flaps, going a little faster now, and then we'll go down the runway. True Maiden here, those big landing wheels are raw card. We'll show it in the unbox, into the takeoff flaps, out of the flaps. Good speed. Let's cornhole it. Ready? There it is. Good cornholes. Okay, full landing flaps, go into a full slip. And there it is, guys, look at that. Look how much we've slowed it down already. We're gonna go behind this. Yeah, we'll just do it this way. Very forgiving airframe. This thing just does it. And we have a beeping from our voltage alarm. You don't have to fly it like you stole it, but you can if you want. I am like loving how nice this flies though. Full landing flaps here, coming in for a nice touch and went. We'll just, oh, I missed it, I missed the ground. A little upside down flight performance. Feels a little understable upside down because of the very few degrees of dihedral. All turn coming. Wow, man, I pushed that right to the limits. Just like we pushed our lighting to the limits tonight. Full landing flaps, barn doors coming out. We need a little bit more elevator correction. I think we have a 10. It probably needs to be more like about 15 to 20. Let's see if we can actually touch the ground. Look at that. Indifferent. Hey, let's go to the center of the runway, please. Thank you, very good. I love the landing lights. They look so super ultra realistic. And they're definitely, oh man, the silhouette's gorgeous. Okay, up and over. Want to switch light condition? Green is really easy to see too. Usually the green is hard to see. Okay, so we're just gonna bring it out there from a distance and watch the landing lights with takeoff lap deployment. Oh man, that looks so gorgeous. You can absolutely see it as we dip down below the horizon. That's mm -hmm. always a troublesome time of night that we're flying in. With regard to visibility, definitely rough on the bounciness there. You definitely have to really grease the landing with hard landing wheels like this. One minute time remaining on our five. I think we're doing great on battery life. Okay, let's go to the barn door setting here on our final. Just see if we can relax into a landing and see if we can grease it in. Oh yeah, buddy. That's pretty good stuff right there. Now, you'll notice the hop, skip, and jump. That's because we have really firm tires. Let's talk about mix. Okay, 37 seconds left, flap system. I'm gonna go to like eight, and then we'll go to like 15. You know what, throw caution to the wind, 16. <laughs> Let's see how this works. I guarantee you we're not gonna lose power, but we will know how to land it if we do. Okay, so take off flaps deployed. Here we go. See if we can drag that tail wheel up. Oh yeah, so gorgeous, out of the flaps. Now this is supposed to be a stole plane, but I can tell you right now, it's an everything plane. If you guys are new pilots, you could definitely put this up and you could, uh, you could do the trainer thing. So cool. The reflex is really working nicely. 
Let's try the auto leveling. I'm going to just get into level flight and then throw the auto leveling on. Slowly correcting. When I let go of the sticks, as you can see, it levels the plane. When I push it down, it brings it back. When I pull up, it brings it back. I would say that it's a little bit less snappy than safe, but it still definitely does the job. Okay, let's go back where we were. Perfect, right there. Folks, this thing flies light on its feet. I was a little bit concerned it was going to feel heavy. Look how slow I'm flying right now. And it's definitely not giving me a peep of trouble. Hyper-realistic looking in the air. Wish there was a taillight bad now because this thing is a great evening flyer, relaxing flyer. Okay, full landing flaps now. Let's see if we can do some very slow flying. Right, right overhead with a substantial structure to protect us also known as my hard head. So if you guys are looking for a plane that would be just a fantastic beginner plane, but also if you're looking for a plane and you're not a beginner, oh yeah, let's try three wheel landing. Okay, let's try some grass ops here before we run out of battery. Okay, this is a stool plane after all, short takeoff or landing. Okay, get that tail pointed at us. We're gonna go full up elevator, we're gonna just get into the throttle slow and then we're gonna go quick. Oh yeah, baby, we're in the air. They said less than three meters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they were a little bit wrong on that. It's more like about one plane length. Now, to be frank, we've seen faster stall performance, but this is a very good, well-rounded plane. It's very reasonably priced. I love the size. I love the looks and I love the lights, guys. The lights are so nice. I mean, it's just really, I love flying planes like this. General aviation, eat your heart out style planes. Look at this. I mean, it's just, I feel like I've been flying it for years and I've never flown it until just now. We got home from dinner with our family and I was like, oh, the sun's not down. We gotta fly. And look at this, look at that thing. Seriously, just absolutely makes me want to fly it until it's dark. Okay, let's try a no flap landing here for people. A little bit of slip, a little bit of slip. Okay, and then we'll just see if we can grease it in if we're careful. Sticky tires, they want to go straight. Let's go out into the grass. Let's do a no flap takeoff here. We'll bleed in the speed or we'll actually just go into the throttle slow. Get that tail up. Oh yeah, and then we'll just ride it. So folks, this plane is a great flying plane. We are at about three minutes, 25 past, and we're beeping. So I'm gonna trust it is dying now. It's about eight minutes. Full landing flaps will be coming in after I make this base leg right there. Okay, now into the full landing flaps, a little bit of slip as well, because I don't want to tempt fate. Boom. Rock hard landing gear are the worst part of this plane, but they look freaking fantastic. If you're flying off grass, you're never gonna have a problem with them. If you're flying, and that is a rough patch, just so you guys know, you can see it's bouncing along just nicely. You know what? <clears throat> Do we owe him a dead stick? No. Taking off. You guys hear it? It's dead. Dying. Oh, there it is, it's dead. Full landing flaps. Here we go. We fly them until they're dead, right? Here on Brian Phillips RC. Okay, a little bit of down, a little bit of rudder. So basically what we're doing here is we are gonna go for a full dead stick landing, a little bit of hop, skip, and jump at the end, just to show you that you can crank on it and make a sharp turn. Four minutes, 31, past our timer, which was set for five. Mm -hmm. So we basically got, let's call it, eight and a half minutes of full flight time on 2200 4S 50C Gen 1 Smart Pack right in between the straps, no stinking around, no screwing around to get the CG right. It just did exactly what I wanted, which is what I wanted. Because I tell you what, when I come home, we're in a hurry, I wanna fly, look at that beauty, look at the lights, look at all the features packaged up, it was an easy build. Look at the twin lights, they look super realistic. To me, if it's not that color, 
it just doesn't look the same. It doesn't look as realistic. And I'm loving the way that that plane looks. It's just so gorgeous. And I love the way that those worked too. They really did mm -hmm. work nicely. And you can see the whole orifice is glowing. Yeah. It's not just where the LED is. Now that being said, when you look at it straight on, you can really see it, it's intense. But then you get out of ways and you can see it just the way you need to. Love the way the thing performed. Really, really good plane. Super excited to be representing this thing for FMS. If you guys haven't thought about getting this PA18 Sport Cub 1.7 meter, you may want to add this to the short list. Now, is it as big as some of the competitive offerings? No, but there's bigger offerings in this size class too. Mm -hmm. So if you want a bigger one, that's fine. They have, you know, there are bigger ones. But I can definitely say that this 1700 millimeter is a good size. Why is it a good size? Because you can get it in a car a little bit easier than a big 2.1 meter. And it's also a lot easier to move, a lot easier to store. But I felt like that was some crispy, delicious flight performance. I mean, it was good. And I was, I mean, about as ill-prepared as you can. We had about a three seconds from getting in the house to, to fly in this. Mm -hmm. So one complaint and one complaint only on this plane, and that is not squishy tires. Yep. But that can be fixed if you decided you wanted to put some Debro uh, pneumatic tires on there or something else that's similar. I'm sure it would improve, improve the ground handling. But to be honest, ground handling for takeoff was fine. I felt like the gear didn't splay as much as I would have liked to see just because it's kind of cool. But I do like the way that they are nice and robust. I feel like the wing struts are super strong. I also do like the little bit of dihedral. The auto leveling on the reflex seems to be, if I want to call it slightly inferior, let's say that on a scale of one to 10, if safe is a nine, uh, because there are some limitations that I'm not crazy about on safe, let's call this an eight. So, I mean, it's just, it's like, it does the job. So we haven't had any issues with it. That being said, I don't fly on auto leveling hardly ever. And so you can take that worth a grain of salt. When I was a beginner pilot, I used safe exclusively for like two planes. And then after that, it was AS3X and then safe when I got into trouble. Uh, that being said, I love the way that the uh, stabilization works on this platform. It's perfect. You're not going to have any issues. You can definitely get the cheaper receiver and just slap that thing in there. Go ahead and depend on the stabilizer from Reflex. So it works perfect. Um, also, it is a gorgeous looking plane. Mm -hmm. It's painted nicely. Visibility is pretty good given that we're flying this almost in the dark now. Mm -hmm. It just absolutely looks the part. I was a little bit concerned about the thick tail, but now that I've seen it fly, I'm forgiving all details about a thick tail. We have had one other model that's similar, probably made by the same company, for another company that has a thick tail like that, and I had the same feelings on it. But I got to say, this one flies better than that competitive offering. I don't know why, it's a power combo thing, but I can tell you this, on 4S, this thing hauls if you want it to, but it also flies really slow, alternatively, if you want it to. And I love a plane that's got a wide flight envelope because it gives you the ability to fly in more different areas. It also gives you the ability to get out of trouble when you're flying in areas and maybe you make a bad decision, okay? So I love that, especially if you're putting it up against a beginner. That being said, this also doesn't have a hollow wing, which is nice for a beginner compared to some of the bigger offerings that are out there. They have a hollow core wing that does hold down the weight and that's beautiful, but it's not good for strength and it's not good for crashes because when the crashes do happen, and believe me, if you're new, they will, even with auto leveling and stabilization, you're gonna crash, and when you crash, it's gonna be a lot harder to fix if it's hollow core. So I'm really happy with that. The foam seems very resilient. It seems sturdy enough. The plastic is where plastic should be, where parts are bolted and screwed together, which by the way, this thing 100% bolts together, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Ours came with floats, which does include a water rudder and means to plug it in, which is really nice. They thought of that at FMS. So when you do go ahead and use the water rudder, you've got something to hook up with. Little bit of a drawback on that, there's no spring-loaded um, you know, uh, rudder. So even though it is an active rudder, you can unscrew that, take it off if you're gonna be flying in the snow or doing grass ops with floats. So if you guys have never tried flying off of floats in grass, it's really fun. 
you want to get your grass a little bit taller than maybe normal and you can actually fly off of tall grass or short grass alike the more well manicured grass is cut uh let's say it's at two inches and you've got like a golf course it'll work but it's, it's almost better if you have taller grass because it gets out of the way a little better and it looks more like it's in water so super super fun plane great job fms if you guys haven't considered this yet you definitely need to put it on the short list we're going to be adding this thing definitely to the beginner short list because it is definitely a great beginner or expert plane alike uh, if you want to put me in the expert category i don't know that i would put myself there but some of you guys might think i am compared to a novice i'm an expert okay uh, but compared to an expert i'm just me so that being said i just love this plane really super fun and look at that cool light so it's it really lights great. it's it's, it's awesome so what are your thoughts camera crew i really i'm really impressed i love the lights it looks solid it looks i like the looks of it better than i thought i was going to yeah i i agree i like the thinner body because it's realistic yeah and um you know you're not gonna have two people sitting side by side it's just gonna be sitting in tandem in this plane so i love the way it looks i love that these vortex generators are built in so you don't have to like apply a sticker because that is yeah, actually kind, of a, kind of a pain. Mm -hmm. And then they come off uh, over the course of time, they do sometimes peel. So I've had really, 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 um, I've had really good luck with the FMS line, but in this case, this is definitely a winner. Mm -hmm. And by the way, everybody has a preference and I'm just gonna say, I have a soft spot. I have a soft spot for the Super Cubs and the Carbon Cubs and all the Cubs. I just love the way they look. I love the way they fly. And so with all honesty, I don't know that we've flown a lot that don't fly good. We've had, I think one that didn't fly good from XK. This thing is no exception, it flies amazing. But this one is stand out from some of the others. Also, mm -hmm. one other thing I like about this is that it's a little bit cheaper than some of the competitive ready to flies. Now that being said, as a beginner, if there's an offering for a ready to fly, I always think it's a good idea to start with a ready to fly. And you're like, but Brian, you showed us how to set up the NX-8. Yes, but I also understand that this is a lot of money to tie up. And then I've got like a $50 battery in here, mm -hmm. so it runs longer. And, you know, all those little things add up and they take away from your ability as a beginner pilot to get in the air and fly and crash and fix and fly and crash and fix and fly and crash and fix. And that's exactly what it's gonna be. Unless you're in the extreme minority, you're gonna be flying, crashing and fixing a lot. So get a heavy duty, easy to fix, easy to love. This thing is gonna carry two pounds of glue on it by the time you're done and you're gonna <laughs> still love it and it's gonna fly just as good. So it's really cool that you can do that uh, today's day and age. I also note that there's no skirt on the landing gear that's one of the first things to break off of 100% of every plane that we've had like this. I didn't even notice that until that's just true. now. Yep. It's so weird that, that every single plane that's like that, when you're a beginner, it's the first thing that breaks off. So really happy with it. Yeah. Definitely a keeper. Hopefully the footage is good enough because it's actually kind of dark right now. It is. Um, but if not, we will have a daytime flight and maybe that flight's better. So we'll put whichever one is better goes first, uh, but we'll share both of them because it's a good flight mm -hmm. and definitely love this plane. So check it out. If you want to help support the channel, buy this plane from the links or something else that you like even better down below in the video description below. We've got links to this plane. We'll have a link to the transmitter, link to the receiver that we use. Actually, the receiver we use is 610. It's not available anymore, but we're waiting on our 620, which would do the exact same thing, except you'd have the added benefit of a couple of pieces of telemetry that you probably don't need. Um, just full disclosure. And then also we used a 2200 4S Gen 1, happens to be a 50C. They do call out a 35C pack in this plane. After having watched the performance level of the plane, I think the 50C was a good call, but I'm probably pretty sure you could use the 30C and you'd get away with it if it's a smart pack. Um, that being said, the 50C is not a ton more money. You might think about it just because if you get into any of these like battery chewers in a twin EDF models that we've reviewed recently, I definitely high, highly, highly recommend uh, getting the higher C packs in those regard. Look at this. You know you're a dork Man, when you wear a pocket a protector. I know, look at this. That's a homemade pocket protector. That's <laughs> what you get here on Brian Phillips RC. So we hope you guys enjoy the video. If you haven't seen the Unbox Build radio setup, it should be ready for viewing right now. 
So all you have to do is end this video and then go look at the playlist and you can find that right away. We publish those about a minute before we publish the Maiden Flights because we know most people are gonna watch the Maidens and not everybody needs to see the Unbox Build Radio setup. We did go into more depth on this being that it could be a beginner plane. And so maybe when we do our daylight flight, we'll talk a little bit more about flight controls and things like that, just to give you guys a heads up if you're new to piloting remote controlled aircraft. We wanna help get you from where you are to where you need to be and you found the right place and you're in the correct YouTube stop, which is Brian Phillips RC, welcome. If you wanna help support us in other ways, we also have Patreon and PayPal, check the links in the video description below. And then if you wanna check out our website, it's www.brianphillipsrc.com, which is exactly the same as the name on YouTube, you may have noticed. Just mm -hmm. don't put the YouTube in there. Either way, it's gonna bring you back here. So we appreciate you being here. And guys, there's so much, it's so much coming right now. We have, it's huge. We hope you'll be along for the ride. Thanks for watching.